The push to open New Mexico primaries is gaining steam. A lawsuit filed earlier this summer claims closed primaries violate the state constitution. Now do two Democratic lawmakers say they will introduce a bill in the next session to allow independent voters, or those who decline to state as a party affiliate, to vote in Democratic and Republican primaries. While the state Republican Party has opposed such a change, Governor Susana Martinez is backing it. Supporters want to increase the turnout for primaries, which was only about 20% during this year's election in June. Also, more than one-third of younger voters who are registered are not affiliated with a major party. Critics say closed primaries prevent mischief. In point to Mississippi Senator Thad Cochran's tactic of recruiting Democrats to secure his nomination in his state's Republican primary. And Laura, I just have to say, his opponent had the same uh, ability to appeal to those voters in Mississippi as well. So I don't know what the shenanigans come from. But let's talk about New Mexico and open, and open primaries. There's a, a bit of a difference here between an open primary, meaning Democrats can vote and Republicans or Republicans can go for it. Doesn't seem to be much, much zest for that. But a somewhat of a closed primary, it really is honestly picking up steam. I'm interested in your, you've been a party affiliate for a long time. Your gut sense of it. Will it That's will a it kind destroy, way of putting it, right? <laughs> party affiliate. There you go. <laughs> will it destroy parties if, if, if independents are allowed to get in primary? So this was one, this is an issue that I've been mixed on from time to time. In fact, we've talked about it here on yeah. this on the, at this table. And I think that what, what they call the jungle primaries, where everybody can vote yeah. in anybody else's uh, election, really for me, as, as a party faithful, really is not is not the best solution mm -hmm. because I mean from a from the perspective of you know the the political people like me who you know follow elections and help cer certain candidates and do different things and towards that end I should mention that I am working for um, uh, Representative Mo Maestas, our majority whip. I'm helping him with his campaign. Mm -hmm. So um, and this is an issue that he's come uh, full circle on. Um, you know, it is it is much harder if you open it up completely and you do the sort of things that other states have done where they allow anybody, Republican or Democrat, vote in either primary. Mm -hmm. I think that makes it really difficult to be able to, to you know, appeal to your base. Right. Um, what what uh, Senator O'Neill, and who's also my senator, and um, Emily Kane and Representative Mo Maestas, as well as the um, Bernalillo County Clerk Maggie Toulouse-Oliver, um, yes. they're all pushing for this. Mm -hmm. um, the idea with these is sort of a, a open primary light, um, and the idea there is that you end up have allowing independents and declined to state voters mm -hmm. vote in either primary. They can only vote on one, right. um, either Democrat or Republican, so they'd select what side. Um, but the Democrats can't vote in the Republican, and the Republicans can't vote in the Democrat primaries. Mm -hmm. And that then means, so you don't have this rush to like have um, one side essentially select their opponent mm -hmm. um, for, the, for the general. And I think in that sense, you kind of keep things on an even keel. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, I think for me, as what I've seen develop in the last few weeks, this is picking up steam. It's definitely an effort to try to reach some of those independent voters, one of which is in my own household. So I've had this over the kitchen table where I'm a party loyalist and yeah. he's a decline to state. And, you know, we've gone back and forth on that whole thing. And I know Tom's also brought up the issue of the taxpayers mm -hmm. paying for it. And I think a counter to that also is that, you know, we have a lot of situations where taxpayers pay for everything that's out there and they don't receive a benefit from it. Mm -hmm. It would be like saying, okay, people who have, <clears throat> who don't have children shouldn't have to pay for public schools. Right. We don't have that system. Everybody right. sort of pays into it. So to me, that's not as strong an argument. Sorry, I'm going to preempt that. However, I do think it could it could result in some higher turnout, okay. and that's what's really important here. Uh -huh. You know, interestingly, we had a, a discussion here at this table with our colleague Gwyneth Dolan, Rob Nikoleski, uh, a little bit ago, and Fred Nathan from Think New Mexico, mm -hmm. who was here representing himself uh, uh, at that discussion, made an interesting point that as late as uh, 1992, we had a majority voting in primaries. We had like 52 percent participating in primaries. That's not that long hmm. ago. You know what I mean? So something has gone hinky here, clearly. Yeah. Is, is this the solution to get that kind of number back up? Yeah, I'm not sure uh, if you do this because you, you're trying to boost participation. I mean, that's a, mm -hmm. that's a nice side uh, angle to this thing. But I think the, mm -hmm. the larger thing is, and I would, I would uh, respectfully disagree with Laura on this, I, don't think, I think this is different than, than saying if, if, uh, if I'm unmarried or if I'm married without children and I, and I, and, and, uh, I get tax for public schools. This is different. This is specifically a public mm -hmm. uh, election issue. Right. Whereas public schools, if you've got good public schools, there's, uh, there, there's, a, there's an external factor there that, that leads to other things. This is purely a political issue. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you're a declined to state person who's paying taxes, you should be able to vote in the primaries, especially since so many primaries are, in, se in essence, the general election because they don't have exactly. a Republican, in most cases, running in November. Referencing Fred Nathan again, Lieutenant Governor, he's mentioned like some 60%, some odd 
are, are they're, just, they're decided in the primary, as Rob's saying. That really is the election for a lot of elections right now. But again, does this solve that problem, or does it create other problems? That well, and, and I just disagree with Rob, because <laughs> electing good public officials happens in the primary. Uh -huh. And so everybody should be a part of that and pay into it and help us, help us have the very best system we have. Right. But, uh, you know, I think two things have happened. One is that uh, what's happened with the electronic media and the money in campaigns mm -hmm. have really, there's a strategy of discouraging people from voting across, confuse mm -hmm. them, maybe they won't come, maybe our person will win. There's a lot of that that goes on in, um, in primaries, you know, make them, make them stay home. Mm -hmm. And actually, the governor going against the Republican Party, you know, she doesn't have anything to lose. This won't affect her election. Uh, and, you know, she wants to hold on to independent voters who might feel a little bit mm -hmm. disenfranchised. And frankly, I think she doesn't believe it'll ever get out of the legislature, so mm -hmm. she doesn't have anything to lose by supporting it. So mm -hmm. whether it's a deep-seated belief of hers or whether it's just political posturing sure. is... Sure. It's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. How much is the public, Tom Garrity, weighing in on this? Do, do we have do we have influence here? It, it, do, is there a rising crescendo from the public to have this? And can politicians hear that and vote against their own interests, basically, <laughs> in the legislature to accommodate that? Yeah. Well, you know, by means of disclosure, Please. I am a decline to state, mm -hmm. so I have a vested interest in this. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am as point. well. I have an interest <laughs> as well. Yeah. I mean, you know, so to have a primary take place, and I chuckled when I heard Laura's, uh, you know, conversation, because we have gone round around about this on a regular basis. And I think that this is really an opportunity for parties to step up their game, for Republicans and Democrats to say, you know what, uh, we're going to welcome independent voters uh, to vote in our primaries. We're going to market to you to try and get you to come and vote for us, not just in the primary, but also in the general election. It's a great opportunity to create that voter buy-in. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, my tax dollars go uh, towards uh, elections. Uh, I am a registered voter. Why shouldn't I be able to vote right. in a primary election right. and make my voice heard? And I know that we've gone through this round and round. Yeah, I'm, I'm still on the, on the idea of, as well, and I'll stay with you, Tom, on there's got to be something in it for the parties that would be unexpected. There's some good stuff for the parties, I think, but there's yeah. got to be some downsides here. Don't, oh, don't, sure. we, don't you just unravel the basic foundation of what the party's supposed to be about? Or, or, there is that risk, yeah, because, you know, if you traditionally, if the Republicans go to the right and Democrats go to the left to make their elections and independents are in, tend to be in the middle, right. uh, not always the case, by the way, right. um, then, you know, you're going to have to create more of a centrist message if you're going right. to try and attract those independents. Right. But it really comes down to making sure that you get your base out to vote. Right. Uh, do, you, do you agree with that, Rob, that it would attract a certain kind of candidate if, if, uh, or a different kind of candidate? There might be, uh, uh, you might be able to, to get uh, more centrist type candidates because you'd have to open things up mm -hmm. uh, but my, my general feeling is you could still have party primaries just that they don't want they could pay for them themselves sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know I gotta turn you I on that one because right. <laughs> I've, I've had some first-hand experience I of bet. that uh, uh -huh. and it's 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 very tough it's tough to have a statewide we should, election. We should say you are a former you, uh, for folks I who was don't know. former executive director of the party during one of the most difficult uh, and and high turnout elections right. ever in 2008 for uh, for the caucus and uh, mm -hmm. and that was one that was completely paid for by the Democratic Party and uh, yeah. you know, there are a lot of issues when you don't have the resources of the state but mm -hmm. you know I will say that you know to the point about how a, a child and the, the benefits the sort of secondary benefits of, of somebody somebody's education mm -hmm. benefiting us more than our elected officials I mean I would completely disagree I mean I would, my household is is a dink household to you know dual income mm -hmm. no kids mm -hmm. Um, by choice, and that that's how it will remain <laughs> right, um, right. for us. You know whether whether a child receives a, an education is not going to impact us necessarily. I mean, mm -hmm. in the aggregate, I can see there being some mm -hmm. benefits, mm -hmm. but not going to immediately impact us the way our elected official sure. will be. Whether it's sure. you know whoever our elected official will be and the decisions they're making. Last question. I want to stay with you on this. This idea that younger younger folks are more inclined to decline to state. Is that, a, is that a benefit as well, to get younger people into the process? Absolutely. I mean, okay. and I think part of this, this strategy, of course, is that the Democrats are banking on the fact that when more people right. in this state vote, 
more Democrats win because ultimately a lot of those decline to state voters and, and independent voters mm -hmm. are looking at issues. They care about issues. They care less about the party mm -hmm. um, values or platform. They're talking about individual issues and candidates who can be effective in that realm. Mm -hmm. And I think the Democrats um, believe that they have the right candidates, and I agree. Yeah, it's a lever. We'll have to see how, if it can find something. It's interesting. Please. Well, we, we say, you know, when you say people care about issues, they care about issues more than they do about candidates. We saw that in the in the respect Albuquerque women campaign where we upped the local turnout and also in Rio Rancho when there was an effort to take away the UNM tax mm -hmm. it, it there were 10,000 more people turned out about that issue mm -hmm. so to me you know that's exactly right that people care more about issues sometimes even mm -hmm. than they do about candidates and the reason to keep certain things off of ballots because of that talk mm -hmm. about game playing because of that now controversy continues to swirl around Albuquerque Public School Superintendent Winston Brooks will be with that next